Hey, what's up MMA fans? This is Jerry with the MMA guys. We got a cool story for you. We actually had a subscriber from France leave us a little comment with some interesting information regarding Francis Nagano and especially that part of his story that says he was homeless living in Paris, France before he discovered MMA after walking into a gym. Apparently, that isn't 100% true and we're going to tell you why. What our source said was this, Francis wasn't exactly homeless. He did move to France from Africa, but had to wait a week to get the keys to his flat. He stayed in hotels for that time, and around the gym they joked that he was homeless. UFC and others picked up on it, and this is the part of his story that they ran with and sort of embellished. He goes on to say Francis isn't as green as they make you think either, not by a long shot. He has trained for at least 15 years now and wrestled with some of the top trainers in that time. Our source also said it surprised him the way Overeem approached the fight as he must have known about this. But I met him once and he was a prick, so glad that Francis slept him. That was my favorite part of the whole thing. Our source says there was an old trainer who has since passed away who would headhunt in Africa for fighters. He adds that Francis came over with two other fighters, one at light heavyweight and the other also a heavyweight. So these will probably appear soon too, so watch for them. And I do want to add, and I'm pretty sure that our awesome subscribers and our source who shall remain nameless will agree on what I'm about to say. We hate misinformation, and I can't check my source, so this is all just deductive reasoning. But we'll bring it all back around to why Francis Nagano is still an easy guy to root for. First of all, the homeless part. If our source is correct, it would make sense that Francis was headhunted because there wouldn't be any other way a Cameroonian pugilist could afford an international ticket from Africa to Paris. The average ticket price is between six and seven hundred dollars, and for a Cameroonian, that would be like saving half your annual salary for a one-way ticket to some place you've never been. Even backpacking through Paris can't be cheap, so he couldn't have lived off of nothing while he saved all his money for an entire year, unless he had been saving up for this his entire life. And if he had, why would he pick France? Why wouldn't he travel to the United States, specifically Las Vegas, which is the global epicenter of combat sports? After all, he was into boxing before he was into MMA. He was a big fan of Mike Tyson. But we don't see him saying how he managed to pay for his ticket in the first place, so there's our first hint of Rooney, Sherlock. Our source said it himself, MMA isn't as big over there in France as it is here in the US. That doesn't mean it isn't popular over there. Look at McGregor fans in Ireland or Michael Bisping fans in the UK, Rory McDonald and GSP fans in Canada. But let's just assume he did have the money to do this. Even if he could, how the hell would he know which gym to train at? If he was homeless living on the streets, he wouldn't be able to afford to waste any time getting into the best place he could. MMA Junkie states he, quote, wandered, unquote, into the MMA factory. I call bullshit on that. The scenario that makes the most sense is our headhunter would have paid for his plane ticket and put him up temporarily in hotels or something until he got established, on the condition that he fought under his banner. A homeless person living on the streets couldn't afford a membership at an established MMA gym. He would have had to have been a project for his trainers. A good gym owner doesn't just let anybody train in their gym for nothing. They would go out of business. Nagano would have had to have been a pet project and an asset to the gym and treated as such. I tried looking for this coach who passed away, but I felt like I was crossing the line there a little bit. And in light of recent events on YouTube, I just stopped searching. But I can tell you right now, I couldn't find anything. And next, the homeless part. It's not uncommon for fighters to live at gyms they train at. I mean, they practically do anyway. I've known several people who have done this for various reasons, and it isn't always because they're homeless. It may just mean they're in transition from one place to another. Or they just spend all their time at the gym anyway, so why pay rent for essentially a bedroom? Especially if they work there, they teach there, they train there. There's really no point in leaving or paying for another place. Our source said the homeless joke came from how Nagani was staying in hotels till he got the keys to his flat. In other words, he didn't have a permanent home, so his teammates had a running joke that he was homeless. Get it, Watson? So let's assume that our source is telling the truth, which he probably is. That doesn't take anything away from Nagano's story. Look, Nagano took an enormous risk leaving his home to go to a foreign country, which, if you know anything about Europe, they're not exactly very tolerant, especially to people of African descent. This is especially evident in his post-fight speech against Alistair Overeem, where he says, fuck racism. This is probably because he's dealt with it in Cameroon, but probably in France, as do a lot of immigrants in Europe. Look, Nagano took an enormous risk by leaving his home to go to a foreign country to compete in the hardest sport in the world, and he did it while broke and unknown on little more than a dream and some training under his belt. In five years, he witnessed his dream become a reality and is now motivating others, especially from his home of Cameroon, to follow their dream, saying that it'll become true if you only believe in yourself and work hard at it. 
In addition to giving back to his community by building a gym and giving young dreamers like him the advantages that he didn't have. The more plausible story of Francis Naganu was that he was a poor young man in Africa who was discovered by a trainer who brought him back to France with the intention of making him a champion. Like all legends or good stories, his is based in truth, but we as people like to embellish ever so slightly to make it sound more terrific than it already is. Fact of the matter is that Francis Naganu has worked very hard to get where he's at. He put his trust in a lot of people that he didn't know and they put their trust in him. He also came from more humble beginnings than most of us can imagine. If you like the video, please subscribe, leave us a comment, hit a thumbs up, and share. We hope you'll join us for our fight companions. Thanks a lot MMA guys. Later!